Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a prototype copy of Pizza, a new family game by Amusa Games. Everyone enjoys pizza and it's made from places all over the world, but it originates in Naples, Italy. One thing we know is everyone likes their pizza made differently. Some like it stuffed with meat, others full of vegetables, and we shouldn't even mention pineapple being a topping. Whatever your personal preference is, <coughs> chicken alfredo pizza, <coughs> you will need to make sure your customers are happy and think your pizzas are the best in town. Because look around the table, you have other competition ready to take your business away from you. So the first thing we see here is all of our potential customers. Each character has a list of toppings or ingredients that they would like on their pizza. And you can only serve these customers the pizza that they want. Each player has six blank pizza slices ready to fill up with toppings. Also players each have a player board that will be set up at the beginning of the game with three random ingredients placed on the four different ingredient slots. Each slot also has a card location next to each ingredient slot. The goal of the game is to serve customers with their own specific wishes and desires and so customers come from all over the world to indulge in your pizza. You gain points for serving these customers their desired pizza, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The game is played over six rounds, with each round being comprised of two phases. A cooking phase where all players will top their pizza slice with toppings, and a serving phase where players will serve their pizza slices to customers waiting in the restaurant. So let's start with the cooking phase. The first player will start by rolling the four dice and placing them from lowest to highest on these colored die locations. Players will perform the remaining of this phase simultaneously together at the same time. All players will draw three of their cards in their hand, and each of these cards lists one of the six ingredients in the game. Each player will choose one of their cards and place it on one of the empty card locations on their board. This card will depict the ingredient that you are intending to place on your pizza. And any of these ingredient cards can be placed on any of the four card locations. But the location that you choose will also determine where you place the ingredient on your pizza. Everyone has a pawn placed on the outside of their pizza. And this pawn will move a number of places around the outside of the board until it passed an arrow indicating that you move it up a level to now place more ingredients in the middle section. After moving it around the middle section, you will then move it to the top or the center of the pizza, and after the pod moves around the middle of that pizza, then it will again come to the outside. This is the loop that this pawn will travel, and the number of spaces your pawn will move is determined by the location where you placed your card. You will match the color of the location where you placed your card with the location of the matching die that is connected to that location. So if placing it on this orange spot here, then you will move the pawn the number of spaces shown on the orange die. And its ending location is the place where you will place the topping shown on your card. Now you will need to decide if you want to take the topping from the general supply or if there is a matching topping from your ingredient location, one of these tokens to the left of your placed card, and you can take one from there to place onto your pizza. You will want to try to take as many ingredients from the ingredient slots next to each of these card slots as you can as you will gain more points for using those ingredients at the end of the game. But if an ingredient isn't listed next to that card, you can still place whatever topping list on that card, but you'll take it from the general supply. If your pawn ends on a slice that has already been served, then you will have two options. First, you can decide not to add that ingredient on that slice, or you can make some new dough by paying six victory points and flipping that slice back over to the unserved side and then add the topping like usual. Players will draw back up to three ingredient cards and again go through these steps adding another ingredient to their pizza. Players will do this a total of three times during the cooking phase. So to clarify, I mean for each cooking phase you will add three ingredients to your pizza. Here is an example. Let me draw up to three ingredient cards, and since this is the second ingredient that I'm placing, you can see that there's a card already placed on my player board, and one ingredient on my pizza already. 
So let's place the second. Let's see. Let's use this mushroom as there are plenty of customers who want them on their pizza. So then I need to decide where to place my card, choosing how many spaces away I want to put this mushroom. But also trying to use up the ingredients on the left side in the ingredient slot. So I see the mushroom is in two places, but I think placing it on this slot here will get that mushroom to be placed on this same slice that I'm on now. As my pawn will travel around the pizza with six spaces, and also there is a mushroom ingredient I can use in my ingredient slot instead of taking it from the general supply. Again, this phase is done after players use three cards, and again, all players are playing and doing this simultaneously. After each cooking phase, the serving phase begins. Starting with the first player, they will decide whether to serve one of the seven customers or not. Players will have the opportunity to serve the customers, but the first player to serve a specific customer will score more points than the others. When choosing to serve a customer, you will then choose the customer you want to serve by sliding their card away from the game board. Then move your victory point marker, the listed number of points shown on that customer card. And if you have at least one ingredient on the outside layer of the pizza, you will score an additional two points. With at least one ingredient in the middle, you will score an additional one point. And you will then discard all your ingredients used in that slice that scored points and flip it over to the back side, showing that it's been eaten. All players have a chance to serve a customer this phase, and after everyone is done, all customers that were served for the first time are flipped over. This customer is now worth less points as the player who initially served them gave them something to remember. These cards are pushed back to the game board, and this customer can be served multiple times throughout the game, but the players who serve each customer first will gain those extra points. To show an example, I have finished my slice I previously was working on, and I want to serve it to this customer here. I will score this many points shown on the card, and I will also gain an extra two points for the ingredient on the outside area, and one point for the one in the middle. I will then discard all of my ingredient tokens from this slice and flip it over. Easy as pie. Pizza pie. Now let's take a closer look at the unique customers. Each customer wants their own preferences, just like you or I would. For example, the Italian doesn't want pineapple on his pizza, yet the vegetarian would accept some on his. To serve your slice of pizza to a customer, the type and number of ingredients needs to correspond exactly with what is listed on the card. Like the meat lover wants exactly ham, salami, and fish on his pizza. All three ingredients are all listed on his card. Yet the picky eater dislikes everything except for one ingredient, and that ingredient she likes can be overly present on her slice. When a grayish circle appears behind a set of ingredients, then it means that one of all those ingredients listed. And in this example, it's one of the six ingredients listed, but also the same ingredient three times. So here we have an extra, extra mushroom pizza for her. The grayish circle can also contain just three ingredients, like the child who wants just one meat, either ham, salami, or fish, and one vegetable or fruit, like pineapple, mushroom, or bell pepper. Each customer card is different, and each game will include a different set of customers to serve, with some not being included in the game for that time. The points awarded for each customer stated on the bottom of the card also helps to distinguish the harder to serve customers versus the easier customers to serve. Like the American who wants everything on his pizza, one of each topping. But if you serve him, it will be rewarded with potentially 18 points. After a full round ends, players choose to set aside the last card from their deck to keep it for the next round or not. Either way, the remaining cards are shuffled together, forming a new deck, either 5 if you kept one, or 6 if you decided not to keep the last one. The round marker is moved to the right one place, and a new round begins. After 6 rounds are played, final scoring happens. Ingredients placed on unserved slices of pizza will be worth points depending on the zone they are located on. 2 points for the outer zone, 
one point for the middle zone, and no points for the inner inner zone. Each player will look at their ingredient slots on the side of their player boards. If there is one empty slot, then they will score one point. Two empty slots will score three points, three empty slots will score six points, and all four empty slots will score ten extra points. At this point, whoever has the most points is the most beloved pizza chef and wins the game. Here's a quick end of game example. So I will score two, four, six, seven, eight, nine points from my ingredients left on my pizza and six points from my ingredient slots because this slot still has two tokens left on it. And now adjusting the score, looks like I took the lead and win the game. There is also an advanced version of the game that adds in bonus tiles. For each player that freed up or cleared out all ingredients in one of the ingredient slots during that phase is allowed to take the matching number of bonus tiles. So if you cleared off the entire slots of two different ingredient slots, then you will be able to gain two bonus tiles this round. Bonus tiles will give you extra actions, extra points, or both, and the tiles are used once during the game, unless otherwise stated. Once you use them, they will be flipped face down, and at the end of the game, you will flip them back face up and score the points listed on them. Lastly, in the advanced version, players will visit their player board and score the points shown on the card location that they didn't use that round, either positive or negative. These range from a positive 2 to a negative 1 point, so you can add these additional rules to whenever you see fit and keep the game interesting for all players. Pizza has just the right amount of toppings and ingredients that it makes the family style game the perfect pizza pie for game night. In addition, it's really easy to match the game up with a pizza theme ordering pizza from your favorite pizza parlor. The game provides a way to play the game easily and just make pizza for whatever customers you like, but it also can be played for the players who like something more deep dish. The player who can be the most efficient and also who can plan the best, making the best decisions from what the game preps for them will most likely become the winner. Each round you'll be adding three ingredients, and you will also have the opportunity to add five of the six different ingredients each time. This will give you room to work on multiple slices of pizza at the same time. But at times when you really want or need a certain ingredient, there is a chance that it is the last card that you won't get to place in your hand, meaning there is no way to get it on your pizza this round. So due to this, you will need to plan widely, not focusing on just one customer at a time, but possibly preparing slices for multiple at the same time. Just keep in mind that you are still racing to serve the customers. You're planning to serve the first to receive the most points. Players can always look at the pizzas of the other players to see if they might serve certain customers before they do. But again, most players will be focusing on multiple customers at the same time, so no one really knows when a customer will actually be served. Also, the fact that you will not be choosing the six die every time Working on the same single slice, it makes it important to either assign slices for targeted customers or to be flexible with your toppings, knowing that a certain type of topping can be allocated to multiple customers. Until it's time to place your more toppings on it, making that slice more specific for that customer that you want. The way the game uses the six ingredient cards for you to choose what ingredient you want to add to your pizza, plus the four slots of your ingredient cards mixed with the randomly rolled dice indicating the number of places the pawn moves on your pizza works very well. And I know that sounds confusing, but it's really not. The only thing is it's kind of weird to make a pizza starting on the outside and going around over and over again, almost randomly adding toppings in places. And although it isn't thematic for making pizza, it does a dang good job at making the game enjoyable. The gameplay gives you a choice between a few options and you decide each of those small options and overall it causes players to slowly process the decisions in the game instead of presenting players with one big decision that will take players a long time to process and choose. So I appreciate the breakdown of possible choices that helps the game run smoother 
and faster rather than making one huge complex big decision with a ton of different options that would take forever. Essentially, you are choosing one of three cards, then you are choosing one of four places to place that one card that will decide how many spaces forward from the pawn that ingredient will be placed, and also if that ingredient will be taken from the general supply or from your own supply. Out of Amusa's three new titles, Pizza is the bigger box family game that also seems to be the most complex of the three, although each of them have something different and special to offer. So get ready and toss some dough, shred some cheese, and grab your family and friends to play Pizza by Amusa Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.